Hello tech lovers, if you're looking for some minimalist accessories for your brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro, I'm going to show you some good suggestions right now. Mr. Day. The accessories I'm going to show you today are all great for minimizing clutter and in my opinion they look really good too. So first up we have the Lenovo 14 inch laptop sleeve. It's not officially designed for the 14 inch MacBook Pros but it fits the machine well and it sits in there nice and snug has three pockets, one for the MacBook itself, one for probably an iPad or some paper, but I don't have an iPad right now to test it. And it's also got a little secret pocket here. I think it's for styluses or pens. I think it looks fantastic. It's got a very minimal look and it's, it's canvas, but really nice and smooth to touch. So it's not like those Herschel or uh, Jansport bags where it's pretty rough. It's like they've got an extra layer on top. This will protect your Mac from scuffs and scratches, which will help with the resale value later on if you decide to do that. I like the magnetic enclosure, which is nice because I don't know about you, but I'm scared of putting my MacBook into anything with a zip enclosure just in case it scratches it. It's got a satisfying clunk when it connects. You can see the magnets right here. It doesn't have any handles, so it's not great for carrying around on its own. I'd recommend that this goes into a rucksack for extra protection. I guess it's quite nice for overnight protection or when you walk away from your computer and you don't want anything silly to happen to it. It's inexpensive, but feels nice and premium. It does exactly what I want with no frills and it's very good for 1999. This is the Samsung T7 SSD and it's a must for editing in 4K on the base model M1 Pro. I didn't know how much hard drive space I, I would need uh, for 4K editing initially so I'm thankful that Samsung has this inexpensive 1TB SSD drive. Check out the video popping up here if you want to find out more about editing in 4K on the base model M1 Pro. and what that means for your disk space. It also comes in 512 and two terabyte varieties, but I recommend one terabyte and up. It's sleek and compact, so can fit anywhere and doesn't take up much desk space. The cable that comes with it is also very short. So again, that can fit anywhere you want it to. I purchased this a week before Black Friday and it cost me 78 pounds on Amazon. So if you want it for a good price, just be patient because it will go down. I highly recommend it at this price point, especially if you need a scratch disc for editing in 4K. Great price, great looks, all round top choice. This is the Logitech MX Master 3 for Mac. Definitely the best productivity mouse I've ever owned. It's got loads of buttons and scroll wheels that you can program so that you can work faster. And it also should be healthier for your anatomical stuff because of the ergonomics so you can work longer as well. Um, I've only owned it for a week, but so far it's going great. If I end up with one arm in a future video, we'll know that the ergonomics didn't work very well. I think it looks very nice, even though it has plenty of buttons. It doesn't look like some sort of circus freak as some gaming mice can do. It's quite pricey and ranges from 70 pounds to 99 pounds, but you can connect it with three different computers at the same time and switch between them with a press of a button. So if you think of it as having three really good mice in one form factor, that's not too bad at all. The difference between this version and the regular MX Master 3 comes down to a different colored box, no dongle in the Mac version, which adds to the minimalism and the colorway to suit your space gray stuff. I also heard that the Bluetooth is improved on this Mac version. And whilst I can't confirm that, I can confirm that I've had zero issues with connectivity when using this. Pro tip, make sure you download the Options Plus beta software and uninstall the original Options software with the green icon. Some people had connectivity and accuracy issues in the early days, but it works flawlessly for me, probably because I have the beta software installed. This is the Logitech MX travel case. I wasn't sure about getting a travel case for my mouse at first, but it was on a multi-buy offer on the official Logitech website, so I thought, why not? 
I'm glad I did because it fits the MX Master 3 perfectly. It also has compartments for SSD drives and my cables and I treat it as my all-in-one editing bag. So when I'm not editing, everything goes in here and when I am, I just need to reach for this and it's got my hard drive and my mouse ready to go. The Velcro on this is very well engineered. It sticks solidly, but it doesn't take a lot of effort to pull it off. It must be some sort of Velcro generation two or something. Even if I don't plan on chucking this into my bag, it's still great for protection when I have my peripherals in my drawer. I don't have much space for all my tech bits, so I put them all in the same drawer and they usually come out scuffed, which I absolutely hate. Again, in terms of minimalism, it holds several things in one place. It's basic and it works well. It costs 17 pounds on its own without shipping, but as mentioned earlier, I got seven pounds off as a discount for buying it with my mouse. And for 10 pounds, I think it's great value. So here are my high impedance headphones, which the new MacBook Pro support. Click on the link above if you want to know more about high impedance stuff. I really love these for listening to lossless audio. And it's a mixed bag to recommend as a minimalist product because they're wired and this wide is long. Which isn't a bad thing in the right situation like a studio, but it's not exactly ideal for a person striving for minimalism to have wires dangling around. It wouldn't be too bad if you have a permanent place for it on your desktop. It can be considered minimal in that they're great all-rounders, so you can use this to listen to music, um, for gaming on other platforms, um, everyday listening, and whatever you want really. And if you use it as a starting point to dip your toes into the world of audiophile gear, you might not even need to upgrade it and buy additional headphones because they could turn out perfect for your taste. It also costs about £300 and for a lot less money, you can get the AirPod Pros. I don't find these very comfortable after 45 minutes myself. But they are easy to tuck away into a bag or anywhere and the sound is pretty good with bonus features like noise cancelling and spatial audio, etc. They're decent all-rounders if your ears can tolerate them and definitely fit in with the minimalist approach. Of course, the best way to be minimal is to not buy any of this stuff at all. But if you are interested in any of the accessories I've shown you today, check out the links in the description. Tell me about your favourite MacBook accessories in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.